using patterns of integer exponents, lesson 2.1a. We learned about exponents in fifth grade, lesson 1.4, and sixth grade, lesson 9.1. This two is the base, this two is the exponent. The exponent only affects the base it's next to. We have two times two. Here we have two x to the third power. The exponent only affects the base it is next to. So this three does not affect this two. It only affects this base x. That means we have two times x times x times x. Now take a look at the pattern that's happening here. We have two to the third power, which means two times two times two, and that's equal to eight. As the exponent decreases by one, it went from three to two, the value of the power is divided by the value of the base. We have two times two times two, which is equal to eight. Now, because we have two to the second power, one less, we're doing eight divided by this base two, which gives us a four. Do you see how that happened? And two to the second power is two times two, which equals four. And if we do four divided by the base two, we're gonna get a two. And it decreased by one more, didn't it? So this four got divided by the base two. And if we decrease one more down to a zero, this two will get divided by the base two and we get a one. Now take a look at the table we have here, 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 and here. This shows the powers of four, three, and two. We have four to the third power. That means four times four times four. That's equal to 64. Four to the second power is four times four. That's equal to 16. And four to the first power, well, that's just equal to four. And four to the zero power is equal to one. As the exponent decreases by one, we're going from three to two to one to zero, the value of the power is divided by four, that base. We're going from 64 divided by the base four, and we get 16. We go from 16 divided by four, the base, and we get four. And we do four divided by four, the base, and we get one. Here we have three to the third power, that's three times three times three, that's equal to 27. Here we have three to the second power, three times three, that's equal to nine. Three to the first power is equal to three, and three to the zero power is equal to one. And as the exponent decreases by one from three to two to one to zero, the value of the power is divided by three, the base. We're going to 27 divided by the base three to get nine, and nine divided by three, the base, to get three, and three divided by the base three to get one. And here we have two to the third power, that's two times two times two, that's equal to eight. Two times two is four, two to the first power is equal to two, and two to the zero power is equal to one. And as the exponent decreases by one, the value of the power is divided by two. Negative exponents can be written as positive fractions. Four to the first power is equal to four, Four to the zero power is equal to one, and if we do four to the negative one, it's going to equal a positive fraction of one-fourth. Four to the negative second power is one-sixteenth, and four to the negative third power is equal to one-sixty-fourth. As the exponent decreases by one, the value of the power is divided by the base. Same for three and two. The denominator is equal to the positive power of the base. We have four to the second power, that's four times four, that's equal to 16. And four to the negative second power is equal to 1 16th, it's 1 4th times 1 4th. Four to the negative first power is 1 4th, so four to the negative second power is equal to 1 16th. We have four to the second power, which is four times four, that's equal to 16. And if we go down one to four to the first power, we're doing 16 divided by four of the base, which is equal to four. As the exponent decreases by one, the value of the power is divided by the base, and in this case, it's four. 
we have 4 to the negative 1, that's equal to 1 fourth. 4 to the negative second power, that's 1 16th. And 4 to the negative third power, that's 1 64th. Natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, with a 0 exponent are equal to positive 1. If we have 1 to the 0 power, it's equal to 1. 2 to the 0 power, that's equal to 1. 3 to the 0 power, 4 to the 0 power, look. 124 to the 0 power is equal to 1. 5,671 to the 0 power is equal to 1. Even 4 million to the 0 power is equal to 1. Negative numbers with a 0 exponent are equal to negative 1. If we have negative 1 to the 0 power, it's equal to negative 1. So just as these are equal to a positive 1, if we have a negative number with a 0 exponent, it's equal to a negative 1. So negative 2 to the 0 power is negative 1. Negative 3 to a 0 power is negative 1. Negative 4 million to the 0 power would be negative 1. We can make a conjecture, that's a statement believed to be true, and write a general rule for the value of x to the 0 power. So whatever this number is that x is taking the place of, it's going to equal 1. Some number to 0 power is going to equal 1. If x was equal to 6, then we'd have 6 to the 0 power. That's equal to 1. That's our general rule, that it's going to be equal to 1. If we had some number x to the negative n, it's going to give us a positive fraction, so we'd have 1 over x to the n power. If x is 6, and n is 1, we would have 6 to the negative 1. That would give us 1 over 6 to the first power. See? Just as x to the n power, but now it's positive. If we had 6 to the negative second power, we'd have 1 over 6 to the second power. That would be 136. Let's take this a little further. Does 0 to the 0 power equal 1? Well, all through this lesson, we saw that a number to the 0 power is equal to 1. Does 0 to the 0 power equal 1? Well, some mathematicians say 0 to the 0 power is equal to 1 because a base to the power of 0 is 1. 3 to the 0 power is 1. 2 to the 0 power is 1. 1 to the 0 power is 1. So they say that 0 to the 0 power is 1. But is it? Many mathematicians say 0 to the 0 power is not equal to 1 and is undefined because an exponent with a base of 0 is equal to 0. If we had 0 to the 3rd power, that means we're multiplying 0 times 0 times 0. That equals 0. And if we have 0 to the 2nd power, that's 0 times 0. That's equal to 0. And if we have 0 to the 1st power, well, that's just 0. So 0 to the 0 power, is it equal to 0? Look at 0 to the negative 1. If this was a 5 or a 9 or some other number, we'd get a fraction with this base as the denominator. If we do 0 to the negative 1, we're going to have 1 over 0, which means 1 divided by 0. No, a denominator can't be 0. 3 to the negative 1 is equal to 1 third. We have a positive fraction. And the base, 3, is the denominator. If we had 0 to negative 1, we can't do 1 divided by 0. Remember, fractions are little division problems. This is undefined because we can't divide by 0. So does 0 to the 0 power equal 1? No, it's undefined. We finished 2.1a. We're going to move on to the second part of the lesson, exploring properties of integer exponents. My best advice for you would be to make lists like this one or tables like this one in your notes so that you can remember what happens as the exponent decreases and even gets into the negative, it becomes a positive fraction, or when an exponent is zero and what happens. Just make some little notes so that you can remember the rules. I hope this was helpful. And I hope you join me for the next lesson. Bye.